about um, the considered king of the NBA, LeBron James. Um, more specifically, his productivity on the court, and even more specific, um, on why he's past his prime. Um, being considered a GOAT, which means the greatest of all time, um, for example, Kobe or Michael Jordan, I'm sure you guys have heard. Um, he should be the best player in the league as of right now, but he isn't. Um, carefully researching LeBron's statistics, factoring in his age, and dissecting the foundation of his team, you can clearly see why his career is going downhill. Um, for being considered the best player in the NBA at his prime, he doesn't lead the league at all in any statistics. Um, the Houston Rockets shooting guard James Harden leads in points at 30.4. Detroit Pistons center Andre Drummond leads rebounds at 16. Russell Westbrook, OKC point guard, leads assists at 10.2. Anthony Davis, the center of the New Orleans Pelicans, leads blocks in 2.6. Um, Victor Oladipo, the Indiana Pacers, which they did lose to yesterday uh, in their first playoff game, uh, leads in steals at 2.4. So um, LeBron does appear in the top five for points and assists, but um, there are better people at doing job. As far as triple doubles, he stands second uh, behind Russell Westbrook uh, with 18 compared to Russell Westbrook's 25. Um, this does affect his candidacy as being MVP, which basically is the throne to the best player in the league. Um, as far as his individual stats, um, he's kind of remained stagnant. Um, I mean, he isn't really getting better compared to the younger rising players. Uh, as far as points, in 2005-2006, where he had uh, his, he averaged the most amount of points, uh, it has decreased from 31.4 to now 27.5. Um, his steals have remained about the same with a .2 difference in 2003. His blocks um, have remained the same as well with a .2 difference in 2009. And um, the only areas where he really improved were Assists and rebounds. Like, we'll give him that, but that's all he gets. Uh, as far as his age, LeBron is 33 years of, years old, according to the NBA Statistic and Analytical Research Group, NBA Miners. Um, most NBA NBA play, players have the best efficiency at the age of 29. Um, this group also recorded that LeBron did have, did have his most efficient year when he was 26 which was closer to the years he was averaging more points, um, steals, and blocks. So this theory is clearly shown statistically. Um, again, being considered a GOAT, other, young, other younger players with potential are producing about similar or even better statistics uh, than LeBron. We have James Harden, who is 28 years old, averaging 30 points, 8.8 assists, and 5.4 rebounds. Anthony Davis, who is 25, Averaging 28.1 uh, 28 points, 11.1 uh, rebounds, 2.3 blocks. And uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is 23, averaging 26.9 points, 10 rebounds, and 4.8 assists. Uh, we also have Damian Lillard, who's up there. Uh, he's 27 years old. He is averaging 26.9 points a game, 6.6 assists, and 4.5 rebounds. Um, the thing is, with these new guys, they are still improving statistically. So their numbers are kind of still going up, while LeBron's are remaining more stagnant. And this is clearly shown through his age factor. Uh, regarding his team, uh, the Cuban Cleveland Cavaliers, his teammates are another reason he is no longer at his prime. Um, saying you are at your best uh, as a player, you have to be at your best individually and through, uh, through your team by being able to kind of utilize your team in the right moments with each individual player. So um, in doing this, uh, something called team chemistry is built. Uh, according to Bo Hansen, a four-time Olympian, team chemistry is built off of four um, main principles. Your constituent, dominance, steadiness, and influence. Uh, your consensus is the ability to, uh, to be prepared and follow rules. Um, dominance pertaining to decisions and focus. Steadiness is your loyalty to your team, patience, and team focus. And influence is the energy and communication you bring to the team. Um, the only way to kind of improve on team chemistry is to 
is through time. And this usually takes a couple years, maybe even more. Um, this includes by um, just spending time outside of the sport together um, through practice. And it's basically like a trial and error type situation. And anyways, um, with trial and, er trial and error, this essentially takes time in order to get results. Uh, LeBron started at the Cleveland, Cla uh, Cleveland Cavaliers when he first came into the league in 2003. He then left at 2010 uh, to go to the Miami Heat, which loses about seven years of team chemistry that he worked up on building. Um, he then stayed in Miami from 2010 to 2014 and went back to the Cleveland Ca Cavaliers, which um, is another four years of lost team chemistry with that team. And then um, as far as that puts him now, um, he's back with the Cavs and has been for the last four years, which isn't too much experience under their belt, honestly. And with how they've been trading their team chemistry, their team chemistry isn't going to improve anytime soon. Um, this season alone, they have traded over seven well-known players, including Derrick Rose, Kyrie Irving, and Isaiah Thomas. These are very high, credible point guards, but um, they keep switching them for some reason. Uh, by them doing this, their team chemistry is only getting weaker by not letting the team develop, and um, thus decreasing, decreasing LeBron's overall probability um, that being at his best potential. Uh, they do. Two infrastructure speeches, two basketball speeches. You know, I don't know what else we're going to get to of something else, I'm sure, just to balance things out correctly. Uh, the propositions identified, although uh, it's kind of backwards because you, um, you know, phrase it as a question to begin with, and then you kind of introduce the concept of the goat. And uh, you do have to be a little bit careful when you're talking about the best. I think that that's um, on dancing on the brink of being a value claim. The argument that he has passed his prime, that is, in fact, the main proposition. I'm not sure that there's a lot of controversy on this particular uh, proposition. He is uh, older, although he's not aged. You know, he's 33. But like you said, typically uh, people in their prime in the NBA are 29. So from a statistical point of view, he's past the age at which he would ideally be doing the best. And uh, there's inevitably a decline in some skills because of speed and age catching up with you. Um, the notion that he is not the best currently, I think, is documented pretty effectively with the statistics that you're using for the current season. Uh, that makes sense. I did not catch a, uh, pre a preview structure that sets up what the main points are going to be. And in the body of the speech, since everything kind of gets buried in an avalanche of statistics, it, it's a little hard to pick out what the secondary points are. Um, I, know, I know that the stats issue for the current players is one issue that you're talking about. Uh, the notion that uh, the team chemistry is off, that's a second point. I think there's a third, a third point, it's in between those two, but I can't pick out exactly what it is. There's no signpost, there's no declarative sentence. Like I said, I, we get a tendency to be buried in stats. And the stats are important. Uh, it's good information to be able to make inferences from, but we have to know what the inferences are. The general inference seems to be, like, I, like you said at the beginning, that he has passed his prime, that he is declining in productivity. Um, one of the things that I think would be helpful to, would, to know would be why is this controversial. Uh, everybody declines to some degree in, as they get older on, in some regards. Some things you might get better at. Most things you don't stay as uh, good at as you might have been at your peak, for instance. Um, in basketball, it appears that the peak, that you've got a nice uh, statistic that suggests when that peak is, and you know it's just, it's just factual data that he's past that particular peak. Does that mean that he is 
ineffective, that he can't have an impact on his team. Um, I think there's maybe some controversy about whether or not uh, he will be traded or playing someplace else, and that might be a good justification for talking about this issue, uh, suggesting that a trade would for uh, LeBron or making an investment in him as the future of your team would be problematic because he's not capable of doing the things that, he's, that uh, he needs to be able to do to make the team effective. The um, history of his uh, movement... Uh, the connection to team chemistry, I think, is a little bit problematic. Like you said, he had seven years of chemistry with the Cavaliers, and that produced zero championships. He had, uh, what, four years with the uh, Heat, and how many championships did that produce? Two? Uh, yeah, you know, so the idea that chemistry matters here seems a little bit less important, and the amount of time that's going on there seems a little bit less important. And the four years that he's been back uh, at, at Cleveland, uh, how many championships have they had, or how competitive they've been, that's another one of those things that I think the response speaker is going to be looking at. There's lots of stats and there's almost no eye contact. That's also a problem. All right. Thank you.